to unveil the new delivery bike. So what we have here is obviously a 2021 Honda Super Coat. I'm going to put a timestamp right here for the people who just want me to go straight to the bike and see what it's all about. Because I'm going to tell a little bit of the backstory for my subscribers who are following along. So this first segment will be for you guys. So I have recently uh, quit my job at the factory and I now deliver food full time. And it's not something I just did on a whim because my longtime subscribers, before I had the monkey even, are gonna remember me showing a blue Yamaha Zuma scooter when I opened up my own delivery business. And I didn't do, do videos on that. It was uh, something I kind of did in the background. And so we got my delivery business up and running, had customers you know, uh, and clients, restaurants and people ordering food. And this was before DoorDash or Grubhub and all that came to this area. And it was starting to get traction and get moving right when COVID hit. And that pretty much killed everything. And I didn't have the capital to keep it up and running without money coming in for very long. And so I had to you know, kind of scuttle my plans a little bit, put everything into storage because I had all the delivery equipment and everything because I had that little Zuma scooter geared up and it was up and running. And I also had an electric uh, cargo bike that I used as well. So I kind of resigned myself to my fate. I was like, well, that sucks. Can't make any money while this is going on. Everything's on lockdown at that time. And so I ended up selling the scooter and I used that money to buy the Honda Monkey. And from then on, after I made my first monkey video, that kind of became what this channel was about. So here we are years later and I want to get back into that business. And so this was a purely financial decision because the monkey, while I love that bike, and it'll probably remain as one of the favorite bikes I've ever owned, um, it was essentially an expense. It was a toy. And what I needed was an asset, something that I could use to make money. So I did have to let the monkey go. Sorry. Uh, I'm sorry too, because I love that little bike. And I picked up its slightly larger brother, the Honda Super Cup. So, I looked at basically every bike out there that would be suitable for making deliveries because kind of like I did with the Himalayan when I bought it, I just went through the gamut of everything that was available and just started crossing things off the list. And when it all was said and done, this is what remained. In fact, I passed up a Trail 125. I drove right past it. It was at the dealer. It was mine if I wanted it. And I went past it and bought this at, a, at another dealer simply because I needed a little more speed out of it than what the Trail 125 would do. And i sure I could upgrade the thing and do some work to it and make it faster, but why? I, this already does it. So I had no reason to buy that bike over this one. So, the Honda Supercoat. I mean, it's the quintessential delivery bike. If you look around the world, people are carrying things on these bikes Anything that can be picked up, they just stick it on there and drag it around. The whole family's riding around on these bikes. In fact, this is the best-selling vehicle ever made. The only form of transportation that outsells it is the friggin' horse. That's it, and it's got a several thousand year head start on I'm very familiar with the engine, having owned the monkey and rebuilding that thing a few times. I'm pretty familiar with the engine, so that's a big plus. That I've got going for me, and I've already got spare parts in the shed because I've, I've been stocking up on them with the monkey. Uh, oil changes are really simple. The speed is good. I can run over 60 miles an hour in the flat. Going uphill, yeah, I drop down to 40, 45, depending on how big the hill is. And we'll get more into that in a little bit. 
it just out of the box, it required the least amount of modifications to make it a delivery bike. I think the only thing that required less modifications was the Yamaha Zuma 125, but I didn't trust the engine. It, it just came down to that. I'm, it's a new liquid-cooled engine that's not proven. So that kind of set me off on that bike. Um, I wanted to stay between 100 and 150 cc's just due to the fuel economy, and I know these get great gas mileage. Uh, with the Monkey, I was able to get over 140 without trying. So I'm quite sure this is going to be match that or be really, really close. So let's go ahead and get into the accessories and what I had to do to it to convert it into a delivery bike. So we'll just start at the front and work our way to the rear and go over everything I've done. Uh, I put this little headlight visor on it. Not a necessity, I just did that for looks. No, no, no big deal on that one. I just think it looks kind of classy. Uh, and that was one of the reasons why I chose the Super Cup. Because delivering food to people, I am interacting with the non-motorcycling general population. Uh, people that don't know about motorcycles, and some people are actually intimidated by people on motorcycles. So I made it a point not to get anything that made me look like I was showing up out of a Mad Max movie. There are motorcycles in my house. Uh, and in fact, that's why I went with the last year's model and got the red and white over this year's model of matte black, because I just didn't want to give off that vibe. Going with Hondas, you meet the nicest people on a Honda motive. That's what I was going for. So that's why I picked this over most of them. And, and just doing little touches like that makes the bike a little more friendly. And that, that was my, one of my big concerns with doing this. So up front, I replaced the mirrors because the stock mirrors are awful. They're the same mirrors that were on the Monkey. And even though I do have some of the sexiest elbows on the planet, I don't want to look at them all day. And that's basically all I could see out of those mirrors is my elbows. So I've got mirrors that are have more of a bend, so they sit lower and they stick out a little bit farther. And they're actually a little bit smaller, and that, that's not a problem. And I didn't pick out these ones I've got here for any particular reason other than that. So I, I don't... I'll put links to all my stuff in the description box, but I'm not like pushing these mirrors for any reason other than they look they look good and they work. I just needed something that worked that I could get quickly, and I didn't really shop around for mirrors. Just I saw these, grab them. These say J. It's like JCMA. They say JCMA on them. I have no idea what that stands for. I don't know if that's a good Japanese brand or something like that. And being someone who's only fluent in American hillbilly, that could stand for this dummy bought some cheap mares. I, I have no idea what that means. Didn't buy them for that. Didn't buy them for the brand. Cut and dry. Uh, the next option is my phone mount. This is the quad lock motorcycle mount that mounts to the mirror stem. Simply because you don't have a whole lot of options for mounting a phone onto the dash of a Super Cup. So this just clicks into place. And it has power running to it. So I've got a coil power cable running down around to a power socket that I purchased and installed. Now to install that, I had to remove the leg shields and the battery cover. And it was plug and play. There's a port down on the battery cover that that plugs into. That's all it is, so it is keyed. It comes on when the key comes on. There's no uh, like phantom battery drain or anything like that going on, which is what I, one of the things I was looking for. And not having power was one of the reasons why I skipped over several bikes that I was looking at. And I could make a separate video on why I didn't buy all these other bikes that are out there. So before anybody chimes in, oh, you should have bought whatever. Trust me, I probably looked at it and there's probably a good reason why I didn't buy that bike why I picked this one. So what else we got up front? That's it. Let's move back this way. So in America, Super Cub doesn't come with a pillion seat, a rack, foot pegs, any of that stuff that is available elsewhere in the world. So I had to purchase a rack and I purchased one from uh, Webbike or Webike, whatever that's called in Japan. And this is the Kajima rear rack. It's a little bit bigger than the factory rack that you could also buy. And so I went with that one because I wanted to mount this grate to it and this box. 
And these are things I already had from uh, the days when I had my Zuma, and so they were just ready to be put into service because I had them in storage ready to go. So I kind of had a heads up of what I needed to do to mount this to the bike. So pretty straightforward, just simple rack, and then mounted this on top of it. Now the bag itself is held to this rack by four clips, two on each side. lifts on and off the bike so we can take a good look at the platform. So the bag just slips straight onto the platform like so and I just bring it out every morning and set it on here. These clips go through their grating it is ready to go. Now I purchased this years ago uh, from a company in India called Pack, Packer or Pack IR. I'm not sure how they actually pronounce that. Like I said earlier, no belly, don't speak anything else. On top of that, I have a dual extra large pizza bag. I rarely carry more than two pizzas, just from experience, but it, it happens. And the pizza bag is held down by my ADV bike rock straps that are just attached to the handles up top. And so I can just pick up the whole thing and take it on and off the bike with this handle. There's another handle underneath this. And let's take a look inside the box and see what we got going on in here. So what we have here is a zip opener fare. This unzips and folds down like so. I got a little platform kind of tray right here. Four drink holder here. I've got another one of these that mounts on this side if I need it. Um, I can carry drink holders in here. The little cardboard ones, like they just slide in there while I've got the drinks in this area. And I normally keep another insulated bag in this spot here. This tray is removable. I can put it on the bottom if I want to get it out of the way and have more space. So between these two bags, there's pretty much nothing along the way of food deliveries that I can't carry. Uh, so far, anyways. Now, a couple of other goodies I've got going on is I did mount the kickstand to the bike. So I have the option of the center stand or the kickstand. It doesn't come uh, factory with a kickstand, only the center stand. Center stand's nice for maintenance, things like that, and for when I'm loading and unloading food, I like the bike to be stable and level. Uh, the kickstand's just for when I'm putting around on it and I want to get on and off the bike easily. I also put a little hook here that I've got my cable wrapped around, and this just allows me to stick my helmet on the bike if I'm only going to be off for a second and within eyesight, eyesight of the bike. Uh, if, I, if I need to lock it, there are helmet hooks up under the seat. This is just something quick. If I need to hang anything on there, I've got that little hook that I can use. Now one other advantage the Super Cub has over its other Mini Moto brethren is the key. Unlike the lightsaber that the Himalayan has or regular keys that the Monkey, Grom, and Trail 125 have, this one has what they call a smart key. And this just fits in your pocket, and as long as you're near the bike, you can turn it on and fire it up. It also has a few other features. It's got a bike finder feature, so if you're ever lost, can't remember where you parked your bike at, it'll beep. It's got an alarm system on it. There is a corresponding flashing red light on the dash to let you know that that is on. And you can adjust the sensitivity which I haven't done. I rarely use either of those two features. Another one is you can disable the smart key. So if I was to take this, say, moto camping or something like that, and I had the key in the tent with me, but the bike parked close to the tent, nobody could walk up and turn it on, even though the key is within proximity. That's uh, pretty handy. Most, The most handy feature is just not having to put a key in the bike every time I get on and off. I just turn it off go deliver the food, come back, just turn it on and go because the key is in my pocket the whole time. So I'm not fumbling with keys while I'm out delivering food. Now another requirement I placed on the bike that it had to have was some sort of a step through frame. So scooters and bikes like this were in the running where bikes like say even the Monkey or the Himalayan were out of the running due to me getting on and off the bike 70, 80 times a day. As I get older, it's harder for me to get my foot up over that seat and you can't throw your leg over the back anymore because this box is in the way. So I needed some way to easily step through and get on the bike. 
A scooter with the flat floor would have been ideal, but none of them met the rest of the criteria. So I ended up with the Super Cub and its partial step through frame. I'm probably going to have to get some kind of protective material to put here, similar to what I've got on the Himalayan for tank pads, uh, just to keep me from scuffing that over time. And the bike has actually already been in service. I put it in service already and have been delivering food on it, and it has worked fine. In fact, its very first delivery, where it got its feet wet, was up a long country lane leading to a house. The lane was maybe a half a mile long, and it was uphill, steep, and gravel with just large rye. It looked like something I would take the Himalayan on. And the Super Cub did fine. Uh, so if and I, I end up on a lot of gravel roads and just muddy driveways and things like that, which had me initially looking at the Trail 125, but I think the Super Cub more than makes up for it in street performance. So I think I'm going to change to some more gravelish tires when, this, when it comes time to do the first tire change. And I'll probably put an O-ring chain on it when that's due as well. This is gonna get a lot of miles put on it. And so we're gonna see the bike pretty much from brand new to just wore out. And we'll see how long that takes and how well this bike holds up to the rigors of being a, a real workhorse of a bike. And even though my car is a Toyota Prius, I felt that the bike was the way to go just due to keeping the running costs down. It, because the cheaper you can deliver things, the more money you get to keep in your pocket. The less of it you have to go towards gas and wear and tear on your vehicle. Uh, this is going to be much easier to maintain or cheaper to maintain than my car and it gets almost triple the gas mileage um, i'm estimating about 120 is what i'm shooting for i haven't done a full on full to empty test yet but that's in the progress right now actually now if i do run out before this video gets posted i'll annotate it in here somewhere or i'll pin a sticky comment or something like that on what my actual fuel economy really is yeah plus the bike <laughs> Um, the town I'm servicing, I've got two, two, two small cities that I run between. A lot of the customers are in one city and a lot of the restaurants are in the other city. And so there's a lot of back and forth. And so that kind of put me off on the Trail 125. It's how much time I was going to be spending on 60 mile an hour roads. And the city where all the restaurants are is very old and the streets are very narrow a lot of times there's only parking on one side of the street because you can't get two cars past each other on the streets because they're so narrow and so if somebody has stopped dropping something waiting for somebody to come out of a house a lot of times you can't get around it to go continue on your way you're stuck because there's not enough space where with this i can go around i can hop up on sidewalks i can jump behind barricades i can hang u-turns whenever i want and even just the act of turning around in somebody's parking lot to get or driveway to get out of there is a big deal it's a bigger deal than you would think so there's a lot more to delivering on a bike or even in a car than most people realize and i try to take it as serious as i can while still having fun I get paid to ride a motorcycle around all day and enjoy myself. And if I get into, I don't get into like road rage situations. I'm not that type of a person. Um, I might play one on TV sometimes, but I'm actually very easygoing and laid back. And if things do start to get a little t hectic on me, I've caught myself taking orders that most people won't take that are out into the country or something like that, just for me to go chill out and take a nice little ride on the bike. And having the fuel economy and things that it does, it allows me to take a lot of orders other drivers won't take between the two cities because of the mileage and what it costs to go back and forth between the two of them, where for me, it doesn't cost a whole lot, so I can get away with that. So I get more business, actually, that way. So hopefully the bike will end up paying for itself and run for a long time. So that is the new delivery bike, the 2021 Honda Super Cub. I'm going to miss the monkey. I know a lot of you are too, but it had to be done. It was purely a financial decision. Nothing to do with whether I like this bike better than the monkey or not. Or any other bike. Because I did, and I love the monkey. Maybe someday I'll get to buy another one. We'll see. But, new job, new bike. We'll see how this adventure turns out. Take care, everybody.